The conventional thinking about aging is that everything is downhill. That as you grow older, your memory fades, your brain shrinks, and you get Alzheimer's disease. Well, that is absolutely wrong. Hundreds of research studies, including my own 30 years of research, have shown that you can reverse or at least slow down the effects of aging in your brain by growing your brain. Yes, you can grow your brain, and in doing so, you can defy Alzheimer's disease. Let me explain. When I was a little boy in Iran, my father always talked to me about the fact that there is no limit in what our brain can do. He told me the story of a little girl who was born without arms. Out of necessity, she had learned how to hold a pen or a brush in between her toes, and she could make the most beautiful paintings. He also told me that the leaders and scientists in the world, like John F. Kennedy or Thomas Edison, were not necessarily geniuses when they were my age. These were the people who worked hard to reach their dreams. So, inspired by my father's teachings, in my teens, in 1970s, I learned three languages, wrote a book, and excelled in my education. But as I was finishing high school, the Islamic Revolution happened in Iran, and the war started with Iraq. Universities were closed, and everything was in a chaos. I did not want to go to battlefields and die, so I went into hiding in the bathroom and lived there for two years, until I was able to flee the country and go to Canada, where I was accepted as a political refugee. I did go to college and finish as a valedictorian, and then I went to Johns Hopkins, where I obtained my doctorate degree in neuroscience. And then I went to Harvard Medical School and I obtained my medical degree. I went back to Johns Hopkins to do my neurology residency and joined the faculty as an assistant professor of neurology, which was very was very proud of. When I started my research, I decided to focus on neuroplasticity in the human brain. I wanted to know why is it that our brain, the very organ that makes us who we are, can change so much. And how can we take advantage of this malleability in our brain to do more things in our lives? I decided to focus on two areas of the brain that have the highest degree of malleability: the cortex and the hippocampus. The cortex is the outer layer of the brain and is important for your higher brain functions. You use your cortex when you type, when you write, when you send emails, when you travel, and when you try to be successful at school. Or at work, this part of the brain also is a part that becomes stronger and thicker when you practice and try to be better at something like playing the piano. The other part of the brain is called hippocampus. Hippocampus is the size of your thumb. You have one on the right, one on the left. This is ground zero for learning and memory. This is the part of the brain you use when you try to remember names, pass your exams, or learn a new language. I love hippocampus because this is the part of the brain that has kept its ability to generate new neurons. So these were all good news, but I learned that there's one big bad news about cortex and hippocampus. These two brain structures shrink with aging at about 0.5 percent per year after age 50. Now some people decline a little bit, and some people decline a lot. When they decline a lot in their 80s, they often are diagnosed with Alzheimer's disease. But then I thought, could there be other reasons why people in their 80s become demented? After all, Alzheimer's disease is a condition in which plaques and tangles, which are formed because of accumulation of amyloid and theta, cause damage to the brain. But there are other reasons, and I learned that there are at least six reasons. That lead to shrinkage in the brain, especially the cortex and the hippocampus. These factors cause inflammation in the brain and reduce blood flow to the brain, such that neurons and synapses die. So, what are these conditions?、Um, stress, sleep apnea, obesity, 
insomnia, and treated depression, and having had concussions. Each of these factors can shrink your brain by a little bit. But if you have many of them, then your brain will shrink a lot. It would look like the way it looks on the right in this picture. Now, there's a problem. We call this late-life cognitive decline Alzheimer's disease. But wait a minute. This is not a disease caused by plaques and tangles. There are a lot of things. I felt like there's something wrong with the literature. We need to educate people that late-life dementia is due to a soup of different problems. So along with two prominent neuroscientists in the field, I wrote an article in the prestigious journal Nature about the fact that we need to change our perspective about late-life dementia and call it something other than Alzheimer's disease. So around this time, I had my family and two daughters, which were great. And some of my daughters, uh, my daughters would come to some of my lectures, and they would become experts in the field of memory and prevention of Alzheimer's disease. I remember one day I was talking to my daughter, uh, Maya, on the right here. Honey, your book review is due tomorrow, and you haven't even started it. And she said, Dad, you're stressing me out, and that's not good for my hippocampus. <laughs> Around this time, I was working at the Alzheimer's, research, Alzheimer's Disease Research Center at Johns Hopkins. I was involved in conducting clinical trials and observational studies. But I was curious, can we take someone who does not have negative risk factors and make their brain one notch better? Can we upgrade an average brain to a business class brain? Is that possible? It turns out that a lot of other people were thinking about the same thing because there were a, a flood of studies that examined what things can increase the volume of our cortex and hippocampus. And one of the things that became clear is that exercise is a really good one. This study looked at what would happen to the brains of uh, uh, volunteers in their 30s who participated in a vigorous exercise for three months, not three years, three months. The picture on the left shows a brain MRI of a participant in the study before exercising for three months. I want you to look at the hippocampus, which is outlined in blue. Now, look at the same person's brain MRI three months later. As you can see, the hippocampus has grown to such a degree that we can actually see it with our naked eyes on a brain MRI. I think that is incredible. I thought the changes in the brain would be microscopic, not to such a large degree we could see with our naked eyes. Other studies showed that walking 45 minutes to one hour a day can increase the volume of cortex and hippocampus by 2% and reduce the risk of Alzheimer's disease by 48%. That is credit. So I looked to see what else can increase the volume of cortex and hippocampus, and I found that there are six factors uh, that can increase the volume of cortex and hippocampus. Exercise. Exercise does that by growing the number of blood vessels in the brain, increasing the level of a BDNF, which is a healing protein, also known as a miracle growth for the brain, and would also associate with increase in the number of new neurons in the hippocampus. Mediterranean diet has the right ingredients for neurons to grow and thrive. Learning something new increases the number of synapses in your brain, which can also increase the volume of the brain. The sleeping well is really important because during sleep, the pulsatile uh, pulsation of the blood vessels in the brain triggers rinsing of the brain environment and clearing of toxic uh, waste byproducts and molecules such as amyloid. Deep sleep clears your brain such that neurons can grow and thrive. Meditation reduces levels of cortisol, which is a stress hormone which is bad for the brain. So by clearing it, it can help. It also increases blood flow to the brain and increases the integrity of the connections between different parts of the brain. Having a sense of purpose in life and having a positive attitude is also associated with larger cortex and hippocampus, though we do not understand exactly how that works. But there's one thing that's clear. The more of these good things you do in your daily life, the bigger brain reserve you will have, and the more your brain will be resilient against effects of Alzheimer's disease. So even if you have some degrees of plaques and tangles in your brain, you can still remain sharp. In fact, one study showed 
that 40% of dementia cases in the world can be prevented by addressing the modifiable risk factors. These were incredible. So I wrote yet another paper in this prestigious journal, Nature, and we talked about how we need to know all the modifiable factors that alter the size of the hippocampus with aging and doing something about it. Then I asked myself, if these individual interventions can help and grow the brain, what if you combine them all into one brain rehabilitation program? We should see much better results if you combine everything into one program. To test this hypothesis, I developed a brain fitness program. I would meet with my patients for their first visit for one hour, and I would go over all their risk factors, and would develop for them a personalized set of interventions that would address their specific issues. Then I trained a group of brain coaches who would work with my patients to help them exercise more, eat a Mediterranean diet, receive brain training, Many of our patients learned how to memorize a list of 100 words, sleep better, meditate, and also these brain coaches monitored our patients' progress. The results were much better than I had expected. It was really surprising. Let me tell you about one of my patients. Carol was in her 70s and had significant memory loss and confusion. She also had depression, diabetes, and back pain. She was taking 20 medications. So when I went over her first visit, I realized that we need to reduce her medications and help her with her medical conditions. And my brain coaches worked with her to improve her brain vitality. After 12 weeks, she became a new person. She was energetic, she was happy, she was looking for a job. She couldn't believe that she had memorized a list of 100 words. And her brain MRI showed that her whole cortex and hippocampus had grown a lot. In fact, her brain MRI looked like someone was 10 years younger than she was based when she started. One year later, her hippocampus had grown one more percent. We provided this program for 127 other patients, and we saw that 84% of our elderly patients with cognitive decline improved and their brain MRIs showed that their brains were equivalent to someone who was six years younger. I published these results in the Journal of Prevention of Alzheimer's Disease, and this article was actually featured in Time magazine as well. My next question was, if this program works well for elderly with cognitive decline, could this work for younger people who may have cognitive def deficits due to attention deficit disorder or persistent concussion symptoms? So we provided our program for 220 patients with these conditions, and again, we saw that 80% of patients improved. I published these results in the Journal of Alzheimer's Disease Reports. So it has, very, it has become very clear to me that with aging, stress, sleep apnea, obesity, insomnia, and treated depression, and having had multiple concussions can shrink the brain by a lot. And the more of these you have, the more your brain will shrink. That's the bad news. But the good news is, you do have the power to change this anatomy of the brain. You can grow your brain by getting fit, eating a Mediterranean diet, learning something new every day, sleeping well, meditating, and having a sense of purpose in life, having a positive attitude. When you do these things, you will have a better brain reserve, you will have a bigger brain, and you will defy Alzheimer's disease. Now, on a personal note, I'm happy for the conversations I had with my father 50 years ago. I was able to reach my dreams of becoming a doctor, a professor, and an author. My goal for the next chapter in my life is to educate millions of people who are worrying unnecessarily about the risk of Alzheimer's disease. I want to empower people to know that their daily habits can determine the size of their brain and encourage them to be proactive in building a bigger brain. And as far as you're concerned, I have no doubt that you too 
can take advantage of the power of neuroplasticity in your brains. You have to keep in mind that there is no limit in what your brain can do. And you can reach any goal you set for yourself with hard work and determination. One side benefit of you working hard with passion to reach your goals, to cultivate your brain, to reach what you dream for, is that you will have a much lower risk of developing Alzheimer's disease. Thank you.